Tonight, Rudy Giuliani goes full 1984 and says truth isn't truth. An American-made bomb killed children in Yemen. Omarosa may actually be the person to save us all. And literally hundreds of other crazy-ass things happened while we were gone. Will we get to all of them this season? Probably not. Should you tune in anyways and listen? Absolutely. All this and more tonight on America the Podcast. Back. Hello, America. It's America, the podcast. So, are you still running for Senate? Oh, yes, but uh, I haven't been campaigning much lately. I've been uh, doing research on my own. Oh, what kind of research? Well, it mostly involves binge watching Star Trek on the Netflix. I'm currently on Next Generation. Hashtag Picard is my captain. How the hell is that political research for a Senate campaign? Well, I'm trying to document proof that socialism is a dirty lie and could never, ever work. But Star Trek is about how it does work. It's basically a socialist utopia in space. Well, potato tomato. I've told you a thousand times that is not a phrase. Says you. Uh, 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 Whatever. Are we rolling? Yes, we are always rolling. Perfection! Hello, America! My name is Thebadias A. Starred, a.k.a. the bastard embodiment of and only hope for America, here to welcome you to Season 3 of America, the podcast! A show where I berate you with my most important words about America and the issues affecting it today. Now, while I've been gone running against Ted Cruz as a write-in candidate for Senate, lots of things have happened. So, I guess we should probably dive right back in, shall we? Sounds good to me. Hmm. Apathetic and lazy as ever, I see. Well, no matter. If you, the red, white, and blue-blooded American people, are familiar with my greatest of shows, America! The Podcast! As well as my video series, The Very Important Messages, you might be familiar with Rapid Fire News. Which is what I'm going to do for you today. Because again, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of gajillions of things happened in the, what, four months that we were gone? Jesus. I mean, it just it just can't stop. It's it's almost like it's like a TV show. Has anybody ever compared it to that? I think a couple people have, yes. Hmm, I don't know about that. I'm pretty sure I'm the first. No matter. Let's get to the news. First up, Paul Manafort was convicted of eight counts of fraud. He originally had been charged with 18, but 10 were a mistrial due to one single outlying juror. And you know what they say about those single outlying jurors? They're either being bribed or blackmailed. And as a lobbyist, I would know this, because I've done it several times to many jurors. For Paul Manafort, actually. Lots of money in juror threatening. I probably should not have said that. Next. During Paul Manafort's trial, The prosecution used his very expensive jackets, such as a $15,000 ostrich jacket and a very terrible-looking Veneta jacket for $27,000 as proof that he was accepting money from foreign nationals. And you know what they say. If it dresses like a gangster and for sure smells like a gangster, it's probably Paul Manafort taking money from the Russians. Next. Former personal lawyer to President Trump, Michael Cohen, implicated said president in several crimes. And while he didn't mention Donald Trump by name, he did state that he had kept several damaging documents defining the Donald as disingenuous. Do you like that? From reaching the public eye during the 2016 presidential election. And that he did this, quote, in coordination and at the direction of a candidate for federal office. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that Donald Trump probably didn't pay up on some of his bills to Michael Cohen. That or Michael just doesn't want to be the fall guy for Joseph Stalin to, uh, electric boogaloo, I guess. Um, Trump is basically Stalin. Next. It turns out Stormy Daniels has competition. Her lawyer and fame enthusiast Michael Avenatti revealed that Donald Trump paid hush money to three more women, including another Playboy model by the name of Karen McDougal. And the most fascinating part about this entire thing is not that an elderly man who eats cheeseburgers for breakfast, lunch, and dinner has the stamina to have sex with multiple porn stars, but that that many women are into men with corkscrew penises. Next. 
It turns out that Rudy Giuliani does not know when to shut up when he goes on national television. He recently went on the fake news media and decided to get in touch with his inner Orwell and state that truth isn't truth. And to that I say, Rudy, Jesus Christ. If I didn't love your daily cosplay as old fat Nosferatu, I would have you committed. Because Lord knows I have enough on you. Next. Immigrant family separation is still in full swing. As recently as the past week, it was revealed that the Trump administration wants to keep kids detained indefinitely, regardless of the reports of sexual misconduct with minors, kids being kept blindfolded, tied to chairs, and in solitary confinement. And to that I say, wake the hell up, people. We have concentration camps where kids are being caged in America in 2018, most likely in your state. Next. It turns out that former presidential advisor and former reality show contestant, Omarosa Manigault Newman, has been going on a tape releasing spree, including a tape where Eric Trump's wife, Laura Trump, offered her a job on the Trump campaign to keep quiet about all the nastiness inside the Trump administration. And to James Comey, I say, lordy, there were tapes. I mean, come on. We all could have guessed that Omarosa was recording everybody, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that was just a no-brainer. Next. And last but not least, but certainly unnecessary, President Trump ordered the creation of the Space Force. Because in his words, space is a war-fighting domain. And to that I say, well, he's not wrong. I mean, the war with the Golgax has been going on for, oh, what, 40, 50 years now? I mean, we just weren't ready to tell the public yet, you know? What? Are you... what? What do you mean, what? We've been fighting a war with aliens for... Did you say 50 years? Oh, uh, yes, of course. I mean, we it's been off and on. Uh, the Galgax have been attacking, but uh, ever since we signed that treaty with the Mooninians, you know, the people that live on the dark side of the moon, um, we've been able to fend them off for the most part. Uh, they leave a crop circle now and again and turn a bunch of frogs gay, you know, every few years. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Is this something you weren't supposed to tell everybody? I mean, we're not recording this, right? We are always recording, Feb. Well, hmm. Well, I guess the Illuminati will just erase everybody's minds again like they always do once they listen to this. So. Wait, they're going to do what? No matter. Anyways, um, I guess that's it for Rapid Fire News. Uh, we'll be right back uh, with more America the Podcast after these messages. What the fuck? You can't go to commercial right after revealing aliens or rip. It's America the Podcast. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Philippi, founder of Shui Media and the producer of the show you're enjoying right now. At Shui Media, we produce a lot of content, and due to, you know, capitalism, we need money to keep making that content. And that's where you, the fan, can help out. In the description of this episode, you'll find multiple affiliate links that help out Shui Media and help out you as well. You can also head over to shuimedia.com slash affiliates for a full list of the affiliate links that help out Shui, help out you, or maybe even help out one of your friends or family members. And that's it. That's the commercial. Thanks for listening. And now, back to the show. It's America, the podcast! And we are back. Next up is a new segment we call, So Let Me Get This Straight. Today's subject, Colin Kaepernick's Nike ad and the self-described patriots burning their dope-ass Nike shoes. So let me get this straight. All of you patriots out there who think it's okay to burn your shoes just because Nike decided to make a statement. You think it's okay to burn your shoes? Hmm, alright. You also claim to love veterans and the homeless, as most likely I'm going to assume all of you conservatives out there are the Christian type. Uh, at least you claim, you're burning your shoes while a homeless man, and most likely a homeless veteran, considering there are thousands of them, is sleeping probably two miles from your house. So you think it's okay to burn your shoes rather than go give them to, say, a homeless person? Or do you just lack the self-reflection to do something? Hmm, let me think. Is it you are just wanting to get Twitter followers by posting your video of your shoes burning or shooting it with your AK-47 or for some reason, cutting your Nike socks? Let me just also say, it is better just to throw those socks away because you've already cut the elastic band around those socks to cut that Nike swoosh off. 
So, double on you. But I guess you weren't planning on wearing them again anyways. What I'm still trying to get straight is why, when somebody at the direction of a army veteran decides to kneel to protest police brutality and says over and over it is not to protest the flag, that you still decide, after three years, it is still necessary to burn the next thing that decides to not support your thing. Especially when it just becomes to the American flag. Keep in mind, I am the embodiment of America, and if somebody wants to kneel during the national anthem, which, let's be honest, is not that great of a song, I would have preferred something by Chumbawamba. When somebody kneels at that, I... That's their form of protest. That's what this country is founded on, and if you believe in the Constitution in any way, just like your god Antonin Scalia, then you should be okay with Mr. Kaepernick taking a knee, or any other athlete. Hmm, I wonder, though. Could it possibly be because... He's black. Because if another white player had done it, say, oh, Tim Tebow, while well, he was praying during the national anthem, took a knee, didn't bother to stand, he was kneeling for something that he believed in. You didn't have many words to say about that. But no. No, this can't be about race. No, not at all. What could it possibly be about? Hmm. Could you also be protesting that Nike is a bad company? Hmm. I don't know. They seem okay to me. I mean, aside from the time they used child labor all those years and then were found out about it. Um, child labor, if you did not know, is uh, slavery. Legal slavery, where they pay children low, low wages in other countries and uh, terrible working conditions where it's hot, people want to die, some do die. That's child labor. Nike used that. And you didn't seem to mind then. But no. Somebody disrespects the magical song and the big wavy flag and you lose your absolute shit and burn your shoes. Hmm. Sounds very patriotic. Sounds very human. Sounds very Christian. I also sound very sarcastic if you cannot tell. So to the patriots I say, get your priorities in order, and maybe go give your shoes to a homeless guy. And to the liberals I say that are all of a sudden so gung-ho about Nike, did you hear my aforementioned part about child slavery? Maybe think about that before you go all pro-Nike on everybody. And lastly, about Colin Kaepernick himself. Sacrificing everything, as his Nike ad says. While I do support and agree with everything he stands for, please remember, people, there are plenty out there who have sacrificed a lot more than a gigantic football career with a massive payout and that did not walk away with a gigantic Nike check. I don't mean the, act the check on the shirt. I mean a fiscal check. Not like the publisher's clearinghouse thing. It's a normal size check, I assume. It's most likely a bank wire to his personal account. Um, I'm not really sure how that works. My money is mostly in uh, the Caribbean. Um, that's neither here nor there. So, now that we've straightened everything out, remember, Republicans, because it is only Republicans doing this, if Nike makes you mad, give your shoes to a homeless person. And liberals, if you're going to be pro-worker, maybe don't be pro-company that used child labor for several years. And to those who sacrifice everything on a daily basis to make their communities a better place, know this. You are not forgotten, and we salute you. And if you would ever like to come on our show to talk about your experiences, please, America needs to know your story. So reach out to us in the link in the description. And we'll be right back because I will be, uh, belly fighting Steve Bannon. What the hell? Is this really what we're going with this week? It tracked well on the focus group. Well, that's stupid. Next! It's America, the podcast! This has been a production of Shway Media, all rights reserved. For more information, please visit shwaymedia.com. Thank you.